Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell. So unless you've been living under a rock, I think you've seen pictures of Duchess Meghan at the funeral for Queen Elizabeth. Now, if you're a royal watcher or a fashion royal watcher, then you would recognize that Meghan's look closely resembles her signature style during her time as a senior working royal. Monochromatic look, clean lines, minimal makeup, minimal jewelry, and an affinity for the classic cape dress. Now, Megan's dress is the black version of the blue Stella McCartney cape dress that Megan wore for Queen Elizabeth's birthday. Megan's hat is the black version of the white hat she wore for Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee. So it's thoughtful and touching. Little nods to the queen in far more celebratory circumstances. Now, when it comes to the wives of the men within the family, I feel like Megan's outfit was the least ornate, very minimal jewelry. She only wore her wedding ring and of course those beautiful little earrings that were gifted to her from the queen yet in its simplest form that outfit was simply gorgeous there are certain photographs of her while she's moving and the cape just sort of glides with the wind looks fantastic besides Megan's outfit which obviously is my favorite outfit of the occasion. I really loved Princess Charlotte's outfit as well. Her little hat was adorable. Now I'm not the only one who adored Megan's fit. So many people on social media was showing so much love for Megan's look. Now of course we've seen photos of Megan shedding a tear or two and oddly enough my reaction to that or my initial reaction to it closely mirrored a lot of other people on social media who immediately said that as soon as we saw Megan shed a tear you can almost hear the royalists being absolutely outraged that she had the nerve the gal to express some sort of emotion during such a sad occasion and of course they did oh my god she's an actress of course you know she can cry on demand and I'm like it's a funeral for someone who she has always said she's had a good relationship with who has always been very kind to her someone who is her husband's grandmother who they've named their daughter after and a lot of these people like some have come into my comment section saying oh well you know she said that she hated the queen and I'm like uh no and provide the receipt of the actual video of Megan talking about her admiration for the queen for example has always been wonderful to me I mean we had one of our first joint engagement together she asked me to join her and I was on the train yeah on the yeah. train and we had breakfast together that morning and she'd given me a beautiful gift and I just really loved being in her company. No, I'm not a fan <laughs> and I'm, I'm not a royalist, but Megan has had a good relationship with the queen. It's a funeral. It's sad. Also, Megan and Harry have been away from their kids for about, what, two, three weeks now? I know she's missing her babies. I know she is tired of being critiqued and criticized for everything she does, even when we didn't really see her. We saw her for most of the ceremonies, but beyond that and the walkabout, you don't see her, you don't hear from her. She never put out a statement. She, she put a pause on the uh, podcast is completely canceled and paused other things that she was involved in that was supposed to be released this week. Harry only put out two statements. 
One is talking about the death of his grandmother, and the second about the uniform hubbub, only because it just became such a big thing because of the press talking about it and the palace leaking to the press. Oh, they took this out of his uniform. They took that out of his uniform. He was so devastated. Just a bunch of insanity and I don't know if you guys saw but there was a video showing them leaving the funeral um, I believe on their way to the private um, funeral for the Queen that was um, only meant for family members and you can see the just the exhaustion on their faces and quite frankly, I'm a spectator, right? We all are. We don't know what it feels like to be in their position, but man, oh man, it's been an exhausting couple of weeks, an exhausting week going through and, and just being bombarded with so much articles and videos and body language experts breaking it all down and I don't doubt for a second that this was a perfect reminder to Harry and Meghan that yeah they were right to leave because that was insane and like I said before in my previous video you would think that in this time of mourning for their beloved monarch that the British press and the palace would just cut the nonsense, put a pause on it and focus on celebrating her life or legacy. You know, well, <laughs> I'm not a royalist, but you know, even though I am not fond of the institution, there's a lot of people who are and you know, different strokes for different folks. So you would think that they would just stop, give it a rest, but no. They made it into the Harry and Meghan show and I know they're exhausted and tired and I'm thinking her tears is a combination of sorrow because it is such a somber occasion but also just the mere emotional exhaustion and missing her children and also knowing that the end of the tunnel approaches quickly and that she can finally just leave and find some peace in California. Now also, <laughs> as soon as the funeral was over, and we haven't seen Harry and Meghan, what, in like a couple of hours, there was a story leaked to the tabloid saying that Meghan wrote a letter to Charles requesting a one-on-one -on -one meeting after the funeral and uh, again just more backbiting more leaks more drama and even today i saw um, a couple of these royal experts i can't remember the name of the woman but she had recently wrote a book um disparaging megan because you know that's like what they all do now and she was saying oh well you know Harry and Meghan they need to come back and they need to help out but neglecting the fact that the press and people like her played a huge part in the reason they left to begin with just months ago she wrote a book trashing Meghan for just about everything that she's done also talking about the toxic environment within the palace and um, how much Meghan was hated by the aides and courtiers. And even before she wrote the book, there's video coverage of her, um, I believe before they got married or like when they were newlyweds. And she was talking about the challenges that Meghan would face. And what she's dealing with are two pronged horrors. One is the awful gossiping, feuding, sneaky, vipering, hissing courtiers mm -hmm. of the different rival camps. And the in other. In the palace, you mean? In the palace, oh. yeah. I believe her name is Tina Brown. And sure enough, the things that she wrote about in the book basically saying that within the palace, the aides and courtiers are, well, they're vicious, right? And it's amazing to me how 
the selective memory of these royal commentators and autobiographers work because more often than not a lot of the ones that we see and hear about disparaging Megan you can almost always find videos <laughs> of them prior to well I hate to say the Megxit word but prior to them leaving saying um, how problematic the royal family is saying how challenging it's going to be for Megan saying how vicious the the inner sanctum of the palace is in terms of actually address the fact that much of the negativity towards the couple is coming from within the royal family the royal family and staff of the royal family are the ones that are very often leaking these stories to the press in terms of the houses or the palaces leaking against each other and the aides and the courtiers commenting on Megan's work ethic, which they initially loved, but then it turned into a negative, right? There's even video of, I believe it was Piers and uh, Princess Diana's former butler talking about the royal family and basically saying, yeah, you know, they have a dodgy reputation when it comes to racism and a lot of other things. And we see how quickly their tune has changed. That this woman existed. All the alarm bells rang at Buckingham Palace. And they, I could almost hear them saying, pull the shutters down. It's an invasion. She's mixed race. She's American. She's a divorcee, actress. Those are four ticks. No member of the royal family, the senior members, ever thought they would see having to be ticked when it came to Harry's bride. All the things that frightened the royal family have suddenly arrived on their doorstep. I can hear Diana laughing now. Meghan's marrying into a family which has, to put it mildly, a dodgy track record on race. It's not Meghan Markle's problem, it's their problem. You know, Pierce didn't get that wedding invite and he turned on her like that. And now all of them have been saying all of these things about Harry and Meghan, disparaging them, attacking them for anything and everything they do. Even when we don't see them for very much, <laughs> there are articles that has basically count down the days since we've last seen Meghan. One of them, I believe, was entitled uh, Duchess of Disappearance or something of the sort because we hadn't seen Megan in over a hundred days. So for all the people who like to say, well, why don't they just go and get the privacy they said they wanted? They had never said that they wanted privacy at all. And anytime someone comes into my comment section making that claim, I'm like, uh, show me where, girl. Where did they say that? Because they didn't. The first time that Megan talked about privacy was at the Oprah interview. And interestingly enough, a lot of people have to say, well, the point of contention started with the Oprah interview. No, sweetie. The issue started the day they found out that Harry and Megan were an item. Those disgusting articles, having a niggling feeling straight out of Compton insinuations that Megan's uh, romantic scenes from Suits is pornographic in nature. The Wikipedia page with her name changed to a little girl eating a watermelon. There was a lot of attacks microaggressions, anti-American, anti-American sentiment. I don't think they cared as much about the, that she was a divorcee, but the racism and anti-Americanism and classism and misogyny, oh, it's a cocktail of those. And then all of the leaks from the palace especially after that fantastic uh, Oceanic tour, Oceana tour. 
But now, Harry and Meghan should make concessions. But didn't they offer to do half in, half out? And wasn't that denied? But now, it may be a possibility? Why do Harry and Meghan have to make concessions for the people who drove them out? William and Kate are, or they should be capable of stepping it up. They're lazy. They've always been lazy. And I don't understand how some of these royalists and people within the palace, not the palace, the press, can pretend that y'all didn't know that they're lazy. I mean, who are the people who created Work Shy Willie and Duchess Doolittle? Royalists, the UK press, because they are lazy. And whenever they step up to the plate, let's just keep it real. They're not hitting home runs. The tours that they've done, when they came to America, nobody cared. Boring. Then they did that other tour um, where you see the photos of them being like held up on these chairs by the local folk. It's giving you imperialistic vibes. And of course, let's not forget the charm offensive tour that everyone in the UK press was talking about. Oh yes, it's going to be fantastic. You know, we've got the, the, the secret sauce. William and Kate are stepping up to the plate. Our future king and queen consort. A mess. American media didn't even go following them for this tour in the Caribbean because they knew it wasn't going to be interesting. They wanted the, the similar sort of reaction to what Harry and Meghan got when they went to Australia, to Fiji. very charismatic couple. Now I'm not saying this to be mean to William and Kate. I think their personalities are just different. And even though I'm not a royalist, there is a part of me that liked the yin and yang relationships between the two couples, right? Harry and Meghan are very charismatic, very carefree. William and Kate are a lot more reserved, right? Yin and yang. But of course that didn't last long. Jealousy, backbiting, infighting. But now Harry and Meghan should return. And I saw there was a clip of her on the Lorraine show saying, you know, well, Kate doesn't like to travel because, you know, the kids, she's a mother of three after all. And then quickly had to, to step in and say, well, you know, well, yeah, Harry and Meghan has kids too, but you know, they can do like two or three months in the US and most of it in the UK, you know, tending to work for the crown. I don't think that's going to happen. The opportunity presented itself and it was denied. They could have made it work, but they didn't want to. Oh, well. Quite frankly, I think they're better off. <laughs> and I think they think that they're better off as well. Judging from the look of exhaustion on their face after leaving and knowing that they had one more event and then they'd be able to leave and get some semblance of peace where they're not surrounded by staff that's gonna leak their every move and try to find ways to twist the stories that always paints them in a negative light being petty and cruel. Did you see the photos 
in the story saying how Prince Charles, you know, he, poor Harry, not only is he not wearing that uniform, he can't even do a salute. Oh, and then they'll turn around in the same breath and say, but you know, Harry should really come back. There's a lot of work to be done. What kind of toxic mess is this? So you berate and bemoan and dehumanize someone and then expect them to turn around? Oh, Harry should, he should, he should just scrap the book and come back into the fold. You know, Megan and the kids, they're an afterthought. But you know, William needs his brother, I'm telling you. The curse of the spare in the house of Windsor. Tragic tales. Maybe I should do a video on that. What do you guys think? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell.